Hey guys, welcome back to Coin Knowledge. So today I just kind of want to go over, you know, make it a quick video here, just letting you guys know where my mindset is at right now in the current state of this market. What I'm doing? Am I panic selling? Am I buying the dip? I'm gonna let you guys know my thoughts here in today's video. And if you guys enjoy being, you know, kind of up to date in the gaming sector, in the narrative, in the markets as a whole, from my perspective. Obviously, nothing I ever say here is financial advice, just giving you my opinions. If you guys can subscribe to the channel and like the videos, your support means a lot. So, we'll go over here in Bitcoin and see where it stands right now. So, if we look at Bitcoin, let's see here where it just came up from. It came from about under $61,000. And, I mean, this thing ripped all the way up over 62000 which is a pretty good move, seeing as how that we did over the seven-day go from about 65000 all the way down under 60k. I mean, this thing got under underneath. I believe it did go under 59k for a slight second. Uh, Coinmark cap is not going to be reflective of that. But again, at where Bitcoin's at right now with the recent price action, it is presenting pretty good entry zones and dips on some of our favorite altcoins on this channel. So we're gonna go into a few of them. Again, this is not gonna be one of those videos where I'm gonna go into like a full-on list of like lower cap altcoins I'm looking at we made plenty of those videos and I'll continue to make them if you guys you know let me know if that's the kind of stuff you want to see in the comments below but this is kind of more of the upper tiers uh, as far as market cap goes and evaluation that I'm looking at right now so obviously we have Bitcoin uh, you know a lot going on there and with the presidential election or the debate going on right now at the time of recording this video uh, which will be last night by the time you guys watch it uh, is you know We'll see how that goes. Obviously, it's going on right now. It just began at the time of shooting this video. So we'll see what happens there. Maybe Mr. Trump will talk about the Solana ETF. Who knows? Because there has been rumors that the Solana ETF was filed. Obviously, there's no official date of it being launched or anything like that or approved. But it's just been filed. So I think it's where we're seeing the aggressive move to the upside for Solana. You know, being uh, about you know, 9% on the one day. I mean, obviously we saw Solana go to 125 here recently to then to shoot up to about 150. Pretty big move for such a high cap like Solana. I still think Solana is going to do pretty well this cycle and I do hold some Solana in my portfolio, full disclosure. Uh, for the most part, uh, well, actually I hold all the tokens that we're talking about today. Uh, the next one is Avalanche. Again, Avalanche to me, I think is still going to be the gaming blockchain of the cycle. When we're looking at overall layer ones obviously you have your mutable x's your ronins uh you know stuff like that but i think overall layer ones not just gaming specific l1s or blockchains i think avalanche still has you know the quality games there in their ecosystem with their subnets obviously they have blood loop off the grid shrapnel maple story uh a few others domi online obviously playable games the list goes on and on Godzilla, uh you know with their guns subnet and their guns token later this year which Hopefully, it's going to be a big catalyst for gaming, uh, but only time will tell. But I think at this evaluation at $27, if you look over the one year here, we saw uh, Avalanche go up to $60. I mean, we haven't seen these prices since before the major Avalanche uh, run-up. So, I think, you know, on anything under $30, I think Avalanche is, to me, going to be a, you know, $200 uh, token, this bull run. Uh, I, I think so, for sure, seeing as how... It was 135 last time, and I think that they have so much more room to run this time. If we look at market caps, I mean, it damn near got to where it did last time, uh, just here recently. And I do think Avalanche does have room to make it to, you know, that 60 to $100 billion market cap this cycle. So to me, Avalanche, I think, you know, my bullish pr uh, price prediction, which I don't usually like to do, would be like $100 at the very absolute peak. Uh, but I think Avalanche is, should be a quote-unquote safe um more of like an anchor in anyone's portfolio i would think so if you're looking for something a little bit lower lower uh in market cap than something like a bitcoin solana ethereum avalanche is where i'd be going to next we have ronin i think this ronin dip and I've, I've said it in multiple of these videos here recently i think the ronin dip cannot be ignored the fact that ronin you know we we're looking at it throughout the bear market as we we're looking at a lot of the fa our favorite altcoins here but, I mean, the last time Ronin was at around $2 was the beginning of this year. And, you know, we saw Ronin climb up to about $4.50. So, that's about a 50% correction from its all-time highs. Literally about a 52%. It was 450 exactly all-time highs. So, 
You know, Ronin to me is a bargain right now, especially if you look over the one month, it's down over 31%. Uh, over the seven days, it seems to be bouncing a little bit. Obviously, it could keep going down, you know, going beneath $2. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes beneath, and I also wouldn't be surprised if we never see uh, under $2 again. Uh, but this cycle, at least, uh, you know, overall. But I think with the activity that they have on their chain, the game or the user count, the daily active wallets, the quality games that they have on their blockchain already, the fact they're moving to open source, inviting everyone, to, whoever uh, wants to build on their chain, is going to be huge for Ronin. And I definitely think Ronin, to me, shouldn't have a problem getting to where IMX Immutable X is right now. And we know Immutable X is multiple billion dollars in market cap. So even if this did like a 5X, I mean, that'd be what, like a three million, three and a half million dollar or billion dollar market cap. I don't think it's crazy for Ronin. Again, I see Ronin, you know, getting to those 10, $20 ranges this cycle. Uh, but again, that's just me though. Let me know in the comments below if you guys obviously agree or disagree with any of these stances or statements or predictions for any of these altcoins. Or if you're bearish or bullish, let me know in the comments. I love talking to you guys, but just give me some reasons at least. Don't just say Ron's going to zero, that's it. Give me some reasons or backing it up or facts. That's how we have a conversation, but uh, I digress. So Ronan's another one I'm looking at. Cedify Fun, you know, I think Cedify, they just put out an update on their Twitter. You can go find it. I mean, they're changing. It seems like they have like this AI jam thing uh, update they're talking about. Maybe uh, vesting, a little bit doing more of like a vesting uh, progress or process on a new project that they're going to be launching on their platform as far as like AI projects go. Uh, because obviously we've seen a lot of projects come out with a high fully diluted market cap and not a whole lot of tokens in, in, uh, dilute or in circulation. So you have this high already highly uh, over really overvalued evaluated uh, project and then you have a terrible vesting schedule obviously that's not going to make a lot of investors want to hop on that project so they are going to see about tweaking that a little bit because cdfi as a launch pad they want people to be excited about new tges and new altcoins swinging through the door and if that excitement goes away that hurts cdfi and hurts launch pad so it makes sense if they want to help curb that uh, that downward trends that people have had on new launches here recently uh and again at these levels c is pretty cheap at these levels, honestly. I mean, again, the last time it was at like $1.60 was the end of last year. And then c ran all the way up to $5.50. I think c under $100 million market cap or even right at the fact that it got up to $330 million uh, here recently over the last year. And it got up to, again, the same market cap last cycle. I think c definitely has it in it to get to half a billion one billion dollar market cap circulating uh this time around if people get excited about new launches and new tges new altcoins pre-sales again which i think they will i mean regardless of the vesting schedule most of the money most of the time at least you can obviously have bad launches but in a full-blown bull market a lot of launches are usually uh you know give you high returns typically uh but obviously there's vesting schedules and there's cliffs that goes into all of it sometimes you're better off, better off buying it on the open market but these are kind of things that CFI is hoping to maybe fix, it sounds like. So I think CFI for what they're building out, and obviously they're the number one gaming launch pad in the space. And now they're launching, uh, obviously, RWA projects, AI projects, not just gaming, really. So they're kind of broadening that a little bit. Hopefully they don't start launching too many projects. And that's weird to say, but hopefully they don't over-dilute themselves, uh, which kind of feel like it was maybe happening for a second there. But again, that could be what they're going into about maybe generating that excitement and hype again. But I think CFI definitely is one that is undervalued. I don't think a whole lot of people are talking about on its dip right now. So CFI is another one I'm looking at holding. And again, you can either hold this for maybe the increase in price throughout the bull market, or if you're actually holding it to stake into the different allocation rounds, then this could be a decent level for you if you've been waiting for one to get into those entry or those pre-sales. But you do you. Uh, next one is Carrot. I say this every single time. It really is like beating a dead horse at this point, but I... Just want it to be known and stated every time that I'm screaming at the top of my lungs right now that Carrot is undervalued because I am I really do think that Carrot is going to do some crazy numbers this cycle. Uh, and we've seen, you know, Carrot over the seven days, we, we've seen it come from $0.88 cents, uh, down to $0.69, cents, then back up to $0.82, cents, then back down to $0.70, cents, then back up to 78 and then back down to $0.69 cents here recently. I think it's showing some kind of support level around the $0.70 cent range right now. So I think anything, I mean, I've been saying anything under a dollar, under a $100 million market cap for Carrot long term 
is a value buy. I mean, they don't have any unlocks, I think, until October. Uh, and then even past that, they have a, a pretty good vesting schedule for the most part uh, between now and the end of 2025, which is where I'm roughly looking for a potential market top. Obviously, nobody knows this could be a prolonged cycle. This could end earlier. Nobody knows, so please don't take that as gospel. Do your own research, as always. But I think at these levels, Carrot, to me, is a no-brainer. I have a pretty big bag of Carrot uh, being, you know, again, just fully transparent. But again, I've said that every single time. I've never had that fact to you guys. So I'm in it with you guys. If you guys are in on Carrot, I'm right there with you. We're going to see where this thing goes. But the fact they are having gaming in AI... Uh, the two hottest narratives, in my opinion, this cycle, in their ecosystem with my pet hooligan. They have their AMGI Studios, which they have like the whole like face recognition uh, program kind of product. And you can look more into it on their Twitter and uh, website. And the reason why we're not going more in depth on every one of these videos, as far as like Twitter's websites, what they do is that we've covered them all so many times in, on this channel, so you guys can go through those videos and find them if you really want to. Man, carrot, we've beaten to death. Uh, and same with the next two. So you can find them, trust me. Again, this video is mainly just updating guys what I'm doing. But Carrot, at a 72 uh, cent range, even a $75 million market cap. To me, I'm still DCAing. And if you were in the Discord or if you were, again, on this channel watching the videos, you would know that I was screaming about getting Carrot around the 45 cent range. Obviously, I think my average buy is around 57, maybe to 60 cents right now. But uh, that's where I did a majority of my buying for the most part, but I was buying pretty heavily still around the 50 cent range. I bought a little bit at the 45 cent range, thinking it would maybe go lower, but obviously you can never call those things. But uh, I did buy a lot down here, and then I also bought a lot at 50 cents. But again, I think my average is more like mid 50s personally, but again, I'm just trying to be transparent with you guys, but uh, I don't know exactly. All I know is that carrot is undervalued, and that's all I care about right now. Uh, I think long term carrot. Again, I've said it before, I think a billion dollars is, uh, to me, going to happen, but I don't have a crystal ball, and uh, it could go to zero. I don't think it will, but it could go to zero. I mean, that's what you hear in crypto, and that's true. Everything could, but who knows? But I don't know. We spent a lot of time on Carrot. I'm bullish. That's what you got to know, and it's a good time, I think. Uh, going to Miria. Miria, again, Gala Games killer of this cycle. That's my stance, always has been, and it is remaining to be that uh, as such. Uh, the fact that Mirror got to a penny or a cent and a half uh, here at the end of 2023, now it's at, you know, uh, 0 0.0037. I mean, if you look at it, it's 80% down from its previous all-time highs of actually a penny in, uh, you know, 0 0.018, uh, a penny in eight. Well, I don't know, 0 .0, 0 0.018, however you would say that, a uh, penny in eight hundredth, I guess. But at a $72, $72 million mark cap, I think Miria definitely has... In my opinion, what it takes to potentially pull a Gala Games from the last cycle, 2021, and we know that Gala Games got to a $5 billion circulating market cap, I don't see why Mario couldn't at very least do half of that, which from here would be somewhere along like a 30x roughly from here, if we got to even half of what Gala Games did last cycle. They have the influencers behind them, uh, they have the product behind them, they have their Meta Rush game, I think, coming out here soon, officially. They have so many games in their ecosystem they have their ethereum l2 they have a big cricket game website looks clean they've been out for a while the vesting or their dilutions only about a 2x between now and the end of 2025 which is pretty good considering that so many gaming projects especially newer launches newer tges going into their first cycle terrible vesting schedule i mean some of the, some of these things have like 10 to 15x and dilution between now and the end of 2025 and myriad does not have that problem since a lot of the vesting and dilution actually occurred throughout the bear market. So, another reason to be bullish on Miria, in my opinion. I think Miria, again, undervalued at these levels, hands down. Now, base, again, we're not going to be going into lower market caps. I was trying to stay above, like, 50 million for the most part for this video and just kind of touch on a couple that I'm really eyeing right now uh, at these, you know, different evaluations here. But here's a Mavia. I think... If you're bullish on base as an ecosystem and as a blockchain this cycle, which I am, I think base is going to have a whole narrative, especially when their token comes out and whatever the airdrop, you know, tends to be. We've seen stuff like ZK, uh, ZK Sync Era, their airdrop kind of fumbled. I mean, I think people just really set their expectations higher than what they ended up getting. Uh, we've seen other, you know, blockchains come out like Blast just came out yesterday, I believe, and people got an airdrop, but I think... Again, kind of a ZK sync uh, kind of dilemma there. But I also, I think people just being DGENs in crypto, expecting the, to get way more free money, but complain when they still get free money anyways. Crypto is a weird place. But 
either way, I think when Base does launch their, their token, which I think should be towards the end of this year, I you know, I, I've heard that, but obviously I don't know for sure. Let me know if you do. Uh, but I think that there could be a whole liquidity injection of airdrops and the base ecosystem. We've seen base meme coins go really, really hot here recently. So I think anything building on base, I think people building on base right now could be essentially people building on Solana last cycle, if that makes sense, or Polygon or Avalanche. I think base is going to be the new hit kit on the block this cycle for sure. So the fact that Heroes of Mavia is a base game, they chose base as their uh, blockchain, uh, I believe, earlier this year. Caught a lot of people off guard, but it actually made a huge amount of sense, in my opinion, when you have stuff like Echelon Prime building on base. There's a few other games, too, like Compete and a few others, but uh, Heroes of Mavia is definitely one that I'm the most bullish on on base personally because I'm bullish on mobile gaming. They have the users for sure, the players. I mean, this thing hit like a million downloads within its first initial weekend within 72 hours. Pretty insane. They also did an airdrop and they came out. Wasn't a lot, but it generated a lot of hype. And the game's solid. I mean, you can play the game. You can download Heroes of Mavia on the Google Play Store, Apple Store. You can play the game for free. And they actually have a potential earning mechanism going on right now. I haven't hopped in it into it in, uh, since the new Phase 2 came out. Personally, admittedly, I've been trying to find the time to do it. But life, you know, life happens. But, uh, but I do want to get in there and start playing again. I know I stacked up my rubies for quite a while. So I want to see what I can do there. And... They're introducing integrations with the Mavia token and the whole, you know, Ruby swap to Mavia. We did a whole video on it. If you want to, if you're curious about Heroes of Mavia and what they have going on in their ecosystem, you can find it on this channel. But uh, I think Heroes of Mavia, again, if you're bullish on mobile gaming and they have the, they have the users for sure, there's no doubting that. And if we look at where they stand today, uh, again, this thing launched at around these prices on the open market and then it went up to $10. I think it launched around 25 cents or $25 million market cap. And then it shot to ten dollars, which was around a three hundred and fifty million dollar or three hundred million dollar market cap, and it's kind of just bled out a little bit as gaming's taken a seat on the back burner this year. You know, past memes, AI, RWAs, but I think gaming will again be a hot narrative this cycle. It's just being outshined by a couple of other narratives right now. But at a sixty-six million dollar market cap and a dollar eighty, I think Heroes of Mavia makes a lot of sense. That's my opinion, but I think it does make a lot of sense there. But we'll see, right? I mean, we'll we'll see what happens there. But either way, guys, as a recap, I'm looking at Heroes of Mavia uh, for a base mobile gaming play. Myria as a Gala Games, essentially, of this cycle, what Gala Games did in 2021. Carrot, I don't have to give you a whole lot of reasons why I'm bullish on Carrot. There's a lot of videos, but just know I'm insanely bullish on Carrot for what they're building with gaming and AI. And they have My Pit Hooligan, probably one of the most fun games in the space, I think, at least for the games that I kind of like. Then they have C5 Fun, Top Gaming Launchpad, or just actually just a top launchpad at this point, not just gaming only. Ronin, undeniable that they have, you know, the metrics uh, as one of the top gaming chains, if not the top, uh, in my opinion, and still so undervalued. I don't see how Ronin is not similar to IMX right now as far as market cap goes, but hey, that just presents us with a good opportunity potentially. Uh, Avalanche, Solana, Bitcoin, I think are some, you know, again, quote unquote, safe staples to have or anchors in your portfolio. That's what I have a lot of is Solana and Avalanche in that category. But again, uh, nothing's really safe in crypto, especially in these times right now. But I think if you bought anything earlier in the year and you're down in your portfolio, just sit on your hands. I think the worst thing you can do right now is start shifting money from one project to another, trying to catch green candles and pumps, selling out of your losers, trying to catch a maybe short-term winner. I think you're going to lose money that way. But hey, maybe you're a good trader. Uh, I know I'm not a great day trader, so I'm just holding sitting on my hands not doing a whole lot if anything i'm just adding to my positions i'm not selling anything right now uh, i think we're gonna go much much higher and that's all that matters at the end at the end of the day is do you think we're gonna go higher if yes sit on your hands if no then sell and move on with your life i don't know what to tell you but i think we're good we're gonna go much higher definitely for sure but we're all part of the ride now so just stick with it we'll see what happens i'll keep you guys updated on what i'm what i'm doing what i'm thinking in these markets and if you guys want to join a community we can get in there, talk to others, and ask some questions, and get some you know thoughts and answers a little bit sooner than I can give like in a YouTube video. Either consider commenting on these videos, or you can join the free Discord linked below. Get in there, ask your questions, talk to others. You'd be shocked. I mean, some of the, some people in there we have that you know are chartist, or they do some pretty good calls, or they just give ideas. You know, on new projects in the space, some that I haven't heard about, some that they haven't heard about. It goes both ways, so get in there, ask your questions. We love talking to all you guys, and otherwise, if you got value out of today's video, if you guys can like the video, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, see you guys.